Please do not judge me by the color of my skin or my hair. I'm as Nigerian as any one of you. In fact, I'm an Igbo chief from Enugu. I'm, I'm a Hausa chief from Abuja and soon to be a Yoruba chief in Lagos. So now you see I'm as Niger as you. While all of you or some of you are planning to Japa, my intentions are different. I'm retiring in Niger. I started a small company for post-retirement which will keep me in Niger. I want to die in Niger and be buried in Niger. And for whoever... So, when Bella called me and said, you need to come to TEDx and do a presentation, I said, what is that topic I want to talk to these young guys that they have not seen in the university, that they have not watched in conferences, that they cannot find on chat GPT or Google. So, I've been working for the last two, three months on the topic, and I identified something new which you would not find anywhere. It is called the scale-up deficit disorder. We know about lots of disorders. All of them, ha all of us, we have one or two of those disorders. I give you an example. Myself, I have a hyperactivity disorder. So I can sit with somebody for the next two hours, meet, discuss everything, and next day I go, it's as if I don't know that person. Because my brain is thinking about many things at the same time, so I lose the focus. My wife has OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. She wants everything organized. If I put my laptop like this, not like this, we're my younger daughter, she has attention deficit disorder. Her school grades, I hope none of you get such grades. And last but not least, my elder daughter who's sitting somewhere there, she has what we call a total disorder. Don't go where she goes for a party or something because it will be a total mess. So in a family of four, we have four disorders. The difference between scale-up deficit disorder and any of the other disorders is any of the other dis disorders at a maximum of 10% of the people have it. So if we look at attention deficit disorder, out of 100 people, 10 might have it, plus or minus 10. The thing with scale-up deficit disorder, I did my best to get you good news, but it didn't work. I've been studying SMEs and entrepreneurs for the last one year plus, and the sad news that I got, and actually yesterday I spent a full day with 100 SMEs trying to prove my findings wrong, but I couldn't. The sad news is 98% of Nigerian entrepreneurs have this disorder. 98% of Nigerian entrepreneurs have this disorder, and you will be one of them. Why is, it, is the number so big? It's because this disorder functions differently than other disorders. With other disorders, if you see here, we look at the ordinary people, and then we say this person has a weakness so it is the minority and it's on the left side of the curve. So the abnormal is the few that are on the left that will cause this disorder to be within a 10% range. The problem with this scale-up deficit disorder is it works on the other side of the curve, which ultimately makes all the ordinary abnormal. If we look at SMEs, if you have an SME, they have been SMEs for the last five years, 10 years, 20 years. And because all other SMEs are the same, 
we find that normal. So if we look from the different perspective that the extraordinary becomes the normal, this makes everybody who's ordinary abnormal. And this is where majority of entrepreneurs fall. As part of the data that I used, it's around 850 entrepreneurs. Their age of the company ranges between 15 years, 14%. 10 years, 41%. Which means we have 77% of our entrepreneurs within the SME range for more than five years. I wish this could happen to us. I wish I could stay 26 for the next 10 years. But it doesn't happen, we grow older. Now, when I ask them, the first question I ask anybody I meet, I say, what are you struggling with? And the answer is simple. Cash, the economy is bad, the policies are bad, the infrastructure is bad, my people are bad. Now, wow. I hope you notice what is in common between all those points. The one thing in common in all those points is the problem is not me, it is outside. Now we can keep talking about the economy from now till end of time. It will not get better because we talk about it. So everything that is outside our control, we blame it to our failure. Only 2% of the entrepreneurs that I worked with, they said, I am the problem. Now, I want to tell you one thing, or I want to ask you one thing. Who knows a company called Amazon? Wow, this is highly intellectual group. Now, let me ask you another question. Who knows a company called Trolley Express? So we have two people raise their hands, but Nalayo. <laughs> this company was opened and shut down before you were born. And the, the concept about Trolley Express, it's a company that has exactly the same concept of Amazon. Exactly, copy-paste. Actually, it started one year before Amazon. Now, Amazon as we speak, is valued at $2.1 trillion. And Trolley Express is shut down. We are not here to discuss why this is $2.1 trillion and why this one failed. Let us talk a bit about the journey of the owner or founder of Trolley Express. After the company shut down, so the company shut down, he had to blame somebody. So he fell in the same trap. He blamed the country, he blamed his partner, he blamed his employees, he blamed everybody. Even he blamed God. That's why he failed. During that period after the company shut down, that person went into a an extreme level of scale-up deficit disorder. Let me give you just a quick scenario about how he felt. Before, when he had money, he had lots of friends around him. Everybody disappeared. When somebody falls, everybody is going somewhere else, where the money is. His partners pulled out of the company. People were, his phone was only ringing for people, by people calling for money. And that guy at that point in time, when it was 20, 2000, year 2000, was 26, 27 years, and he, he was with $1.6 million of personal debt. I'm sure most of us are better than this. Year 2000 till 2001, it was an absolute extreme level of scale-up deficit disorder. Spent a full year inside his house doing nothing but blaming somebody else or something else. 2001, he had two choices. One of them is to commit suicide. One of them is to say, no, I want to change these things. He took the second option. 
He spent from 2001 to 2009 working day in, day out, getting his salary and paying it back to close his debts. Eight years, the salary he gets goes to place his debt. He closed his debts. Between 2009 and 2016, after finishing his debts, the guy said, I want to understand what really happened. So he did not leave a university in the world. He went to Stanford, he went to Harvard, to INSEAD, to London, Business, anywhere. Just trying to understand what happened. And during his work, while working, he was experimenting again on why, why that happened. Between 2016 and 2023, he started having the answers. So he had the answers and he was using part of it to move up bit by bit. 2023, 2024, that same person that was at the edge of suicide started scaling up. And that person currently, as we speak, is the managing director of 7up, is the chairman of the Food and Beverage Recycling Alliance. <laughs> and it's the person who established a company called SME Scale Up, which is meant between 2025 and 2035 to find jobs for one million Nigerians through moving SMEs and entrepreneurs from that scale-up deficit disorder to excessive scale-up. And when those SMEs scale up, we get more employment. That guy said, which is me, I want to help Nigerian entrepreneurs avoid what I went through. The journey took me 23 years. But when I get all those answers, don't think that you would need 23 years to, 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 to develop. No. For you to scale up with all those recipes now, you can do it fast, fast. Again, if I go back to this disorder, all of us function in two spheres. One sphere which is called the sphere of anxiety, and one sphere is the one called sphere of impact. Unfortunately, most of us live in the sphere of anxiety. We spend all our time thinking about things out of our control. And we keep talking about it and talking about it and talking about it, forgetting that we have a sphere of impact which is so big, but we are ignoring it. The rule of any company that has this disorder is if the area of this inner circle is less than 60% of the total, you can be sure you have this disorder. And I don't believe anyone of this room has more than 60. This is how the disorder looks like. People thinking about cash, there's no cash. The banks don't give me cash. Policies are bad, competition is strong, employees are useless, all these parts. So, if we assume those points here are like balloons, and every time we mention that word, the balloon grows bigger, think about how many times we are mentioning those words and how big the balloons are to the extent where they put pressure on the inner circle and they make it smaller, and they put pressure on the outside, which is anxiety sphere, and make it bigger. And unfortunately, this is where we all fall. The cure is simple. Anything, if, instead of me saying there's no cash, nobody's giving cash to grow my business, I need to start saying, what if I'm not presenting my case right? Because banks are willing to give money, they need the right, the right cause. They need to see that, I think about it. Yesterday we had First Bank with us in a session with SMEs, and she was saying, SMEs come to us asking for money. We ask them, where is the feasibility study for your plan? They say, ah, it's inside our head. It doesn't work that way. Nobody will give you money. So instead of you looking at 
or blaming the bank for not giving money, blame yourself for doing the wrong thing and getting the money. You are not presenting yourself well. Let me give you a story now. Because whatever I'm saying can be taken as theory. This is a story about the Niger spirit. It talks about a husband and a wife madly in love with each other. They have the Niger spirit. They work in the same country like you and all other SMEs. They face the same challenges, same economy, and same big competitors. This company is called Mamalicious. 2023 December, they were doing 30 million Naira revenue a month. And because they believe they are an SME and they are small, they were not buying at the right price. So they were selling 30 million, but they were not making money. Does it sound familiar? Why are you all sad? Did I impress you? <laughs> so, this malicious company, by chance, the wife attended a session that I was doing. That was January 2024. And she was such a bad person in the group, nagging as much as possible. Ah, we don't have cash, we don't have sales, we don't have this in public. So in the end, I had to react, and I reacted very violent. So why do you not have sales? Ah, because I don't have sales team. Why do you, don't you have a sales team? It's because I don't have money to hire a sales team. Why don't you have money to hire sales? Because I'm not selling enough. In the end, I told her, if you are not willing to go get sales team, shut down your business and get out of my room. As usual, she started crying. Thank God her husband is a wise man. When she went home and she was complaining, she was crying and complaining about me, the guy, yes, he gave her hugs at this, but after that he said, what if that guy is right? So he went next day to a fintech, borrowed 1.5 million naira, next day, borrowed 1.5 million naira, hired six salespeople, and moved on. And he came to me, they both came to me saying, we want to meet you, now we have the six, we want to grow our business. I said, wait, wait, before you grow your business, are you making money? He said, yeah, we are making money. I said, show me, get me your ERP, your Excel sheets. Your this. The guy gave me his notebook. We sell here on pages, on this page there are some sales, and here we have expenses, and here we have some sales. It was such an impressive financial statement. Did not look like one. Anyway, I said, before we start scaling up, let's work backward and see our cost. I helped them with my network to reduce their cost by 13%. In an oil business, 13% is a lot. Then we said, let's move on. When, they, when the wife especially moved out from the sphere of anxiety and started seeing that we can do it, the revenue in May moved to 310 million naira. 10 times in four months, at a 13% more profit. June, they went out of capacity. They were selling everything they can. They, they have moved from a mindset of problems and no sales. Now the problems have changed. I'm selling all my capacity. So they went ahead, because now they have money, invested in expanding the capacity. In July 2024, they started expanding the range. The same company that was a few months wanting to shut down, now they are expanding the range. They started first by expanding the range in oil, now they are moving into sugar, they are moving into mayonnaise, and I'm sure they have much more plans to move forward. Last month, October, their sales was one billion naira. 1 billion Naira. You might say, 
Ziyad is giving us grammar now. But no, I'm not. Actually, the two owners, lovers, are sitting right here. Can you stand up, Joseph? <laughs> So these couple have moved from a business they want to shut down, that a business that became their future, and now they are expanding very big. Simply by moving from the excuses outside, there's no cash, there's no money, there's no this, no that, to saying, we are the problem, we want to get sales team, let's get it, let's borrow money and do it, let's do this, let's expand, let's... Just by moving, their inside sphere bigger and bigger and bigger, their business multiplied 20, 30 times within less than a year. Most of you here are students, but very soon, I know about Nigerians, very soon most of you will open your own businesses. Take this lesson for a lifetime. If you want to scale up, start by admitting that you are the problem and nothing else. Mamalicious are functioning in the same economy like a year ago. In the same country, in the same competition, everything is the same. The only thing that changed was them. So wish you all to be the future Mamaliciouses, and thank you very much.